So the first thing I put up here is what is workspace management then? So and the thing you should know is quite a lot of organisations are already doing this. Gartner have just created a category for this in February this year, but a lot of companies are already doing it in both the private sector and in the public sector. And we have round about a million users or so already using our software. Um, so what is it? So I know you will have heard a lot about this today. So we all know that the workspace is changing. So we've still got desktops, tablets, mobiles, and the numbers there on the right-hand side are Gartner's prediction on whether these things are going away or staying. So more than 80% of our end users in the workspace are still going to be using their desktops in addition to their tablets and their mobile phones. And so we've got to find a way to manage it, and most of you will already know. A quick show of hands, who's already got MDM solution? Thought so. <laughs> who's already doing BYOD? Not so many of you. So we've got to find a way to manage all of those devices for our end users. So the end user itself, the applications and the content they access, all of the different various devices they use, and whether applications are delivered, installed from the cloud, virtual, mobile, and try and find a way to manage the workspace for the end user. The other thing that I've seen recently, and in fact a, a report came out just yesterday, is you've got to be able to segment your users, and I think Microsoft talked about this earlier today. What are their work styles? What are they doing? What's appropriate for each of the users? And unless you segment, it's simply too complicated and it costs too much. So they've got thousands and thousands of applications out there. You're trying to get them onto the cloud and onto mobile and do that securely. You've got to be able to simplify before you you can do that. So people talk about, let's simplify the portfolio, make sure it's a compelling business case. Let's segment all of our users and their work styles and give them what they want, show really quick value, and then deliver incrementally in phases. I'll tell you something, the good news that's out there on all of those end users, on all of their desktops, more than three quarters of the applications on their desktops are not used. They're not used, they've never been used, and they can be rationalized out. And the average saving is about £400 per user per year, and that always pays back in less than nine months. And there is a real hidden prize out there as we're looking to do this migration to mobile and to the cloud and get these workspaces under management. If you think about it, when you get rid of 75 to 80% of the applications and the complexity that's out there on today's desktops, you're left with a much more simple set of services that the end user needs, and so they can move to the cloud more simply and faster. So they're probably not accessing, not everybody's accessing confidential apps or confidential data. They can move to cloud services, you can segment, and we can help you move them there much faster. So the biggest reaction I get whenever I go to see a CIO, this is, I don't believe you. So it's too good to be true, I just don't believe you. So the, here are some of the companies that have already done this. So the utilities company um, is Centrica, the pharma company is AstraZeneca, Morgan Stanley, Lloyd's TSB. So these are companies that you know, you know that you've heard of. They've got desktop management systems in place, but nevertheless, there's still this huge price. The red line is what's installed, inventory. We've all got inventory systems. We know what's installed out there. The green line is what's used. And so the number one thing I want you to take away from this slide is it doesn't matter what kind of organization you are, you all look the same, and you've all got this opportunity that you can go after of cutting these desktop apps by 75% and create some savings. So this is um, a pharmaceutical company's first year net benefit. It just highlights again that you, there are millions of dollars to be had in there across savings if you can go look at what your end users are doing. 
So Microsoft, I know we're talking about us earlier, uh, about segmentation earlier. We're a Microsoft partner, um, and they refer to us as the usage company. So if you really want to know what people are doing and whether or not you can simplify this, Centric Software is the partner for you. So what do we do with that? So the second part of, of um, what we do with that is we have a look what everybody's doing, we have a look what they're using, we get rid of what they're not using, we work out then the user segments, who does what and how can you deliver it, and then we provide a web workspace that allows you to publish your applications into the browser. And then these can be securely accessed from any of those devices. So you need to think of this as brokering in your application. So it picks up local applications, mobile, virtual, cloud applications, allows them to be published into one space. The end user logs on once. Um, and then they get access to all of their applications in one space. If you're saving content on SharePoint or Box or file drives or map drives or SkyDrive, you can publish those into the workspace as well and the end user can get access to all of their content in one space. The role then of the usage software is not just to simply rationalize applications and content, but it's now to meter and to monitor and to track the content and the applications that your end users are accessing, so you've got a level of oversight on that. Um, so you can really begin to deliver what you've got today in a more modern way straight away. So you can get going really fast on this. So when we think about workspace management, we're thinking three things. One, you've got to be able to understand how your end users work, the usage. So why? So you can simplify. That's worth money straight away. And you can segment. So you really know what you can deliver to who. Secondly, you want to think about that web workspace. Show of hands who's got Citrix in the room, okay, or VMware. So many of you will be used to that kind of web-based portal that you get hold of virtual applications anyway. This extends that concept. And so it's not just virtual apps, it's web, it's local applications as well, segmented and policy controlled according to how your users work and what they really need to get access to. Um, and then the next one, the third one, um, and not so many people are doing this, this is relatively new, is that service broker approach. So that's where you've got the applications and content into that web workspace, and now you can seamlessly switch between them. So if you find a cheaper platform, you can move your end users to that platform. It doesn't look any different to the end user, but they can get access to different services, and you are managing that behind, um, behind the scenes. And that also brokers in your on-prem services as well as your cloud-based services. And again, because you have that usage, you're metering and you're monitoring all the time what people are doing and, and how they're using those services. Uh, you won't be at all surprised to hear that Workspace, Eccentric's Workspace does those three things as well. So Workspace IQ is that usage product. It's available as a SaaS service. It's actually also available on-prem, but it's really looking at what your end users are doing all day, every day. For purposes of um, uh, IT security, privacy, everything that you choose to monitor is off and onable. So um, you can protect your end users' privacy, important for Europe, of course. Um, but you can really see what they're doing all day, every day. Workspace Universal is that single web workspace, again, on and off-prem, so users can get access to their applications and content. And MyApps, it's actually myapps.com, is the service broker that allows you to do price comparison and things like that from different platforms and switch between platforms as well. So that's um, just showing you the interface for Workspace IQ. What's interesting about that, you'll see one of the um, things on there, it might not actually be on there, is, is a recent one that we've launched, which is Office 365. Sorry, all the shows of hands. Who's thinking about moving to Office 365 already has done? Yeah, so one of the things is you think about moving to Office 365 at the moment is 
Who can I move? Who can go right now? What is the right skew for those guys to have? Don't just go for um, E3. Uh, can I go now? Am I going to be hit with loads of migration problems? So one of the things that we've done with um, Workspace IQ in partnership with Microsoft is done a specific Office 365 transformation service. It's kind of like a three-month service. You have a look at it. Who can go? Um, who can use Google Apps? Who can use Office 365? Who's ready? Um, and, and what can you do with it? So that, that actually is officially launching in a couple of weeks' time, but I thought I might as well let you guys <laughs> know about it while we're here. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to sort of bring this to life for you with a real end user example. So I'm going to talk about WPP, which is the global media company. If there are any journalists in the audience, some of this is sensitive. So if you do want to publish any of this information, you do need to ask us first. I was going to drag actually Greg, who's the IT director, up with me, but um, he could make it today. So, um, right, so what's the thing about WPP? 100 plus thousand end users, highly consumerized, at least half of them are already using Macs for their endpoint devices um, and tablets. They've got campaign and by the way, about half of those are BYOD, they're their own devices. They have about 30% churn on those staff. If you think about it, they spin up a campaign and then they hire people in and then they um, uh, turn them off when they don't have a campaign. So they've got huge um, churn. People absolutely subscribe to their own cloud services, mo mobile services and everything else. But these, this is a regulated business, it's Sarbanes-Oxley, so they still have to have all the security and control for their corporate-based services. So here's what they had to do. They had to be able to say, right, we've got to deliver our enterprise applications, but we've got to allow them to have social media, Facebook, etc., because that's part of their job. You may say this may be where you're all going to have to get to eventually, but these guys are here right now. The other thing about their um, corporate apps is they had to be able to deliver them to managed and unmanaged devices, so corporate and their own devices. The, the operating companies, what have they got, about 4,000 or so operating companies. So again, um, you know, it's got to be delivered by the internet. They're not going to have a managed network for all of that, so it's got to be secure. We'll protect the passwords because they're regulated, deliver corporate apps, but allow the users the freedom um, to get hold of their own applications. And their policy very quickly became, if you can't beat them, join them. So they took that service broker approach. So when I talked to them, they said, look, we don't own the endpoint. And you know what? We largely don't own the back-end services either. So we've outsourced those to HP, to Cult, we buy public cloud services, mixture of private clouds. So the reality is we've got to be able to deliver services to endpoints we don't own from back-ends that we don't own either. So we must become a service broker. So they worked really hard to segment um, the end users and the services. And they used our software to be able to do that. They decided which applications and which content they would control and which they would leave unmanaged. And then they implemented Workspace Universal as the WPP workspace so they could federate in public cloud, private cloud, corporate applications and their end users simply log in and um, access their applications and their content. This piece in the blue down here, I couldn't be more uh, vociferous about for you because you must start small. If you try to go with a big global 100,000 user, every service, every user, web portal, I don't need to tell you, you will be there for years, you won't get funding for it, um, and, and it'll be another portal-based project that dies a death. So think about the handful of applications and services to a particular group of users that you really need to deliver some services to. In WPP's case, it was their top 60 execs, which was helpful, obviously, and they're, because they didn't want to carry laptops or anything, and they just wanted to be able to go to any 
device anywhere with a browser, log in and get their group financial reporting. So that was a pretty key application, a pretty key set of users, and they were able to deliver that actually within four weeks. So it was good. It got started fast. We showed them the art of the possible with all the other stuff. And now they just say, let's workspace it, let's workspace it, let's workspace it. And so they deliver, that's my time over, <laughs> so they deliver in phases. Um, so this is uh, WPP's, um, I guess, web portal. So they've got their Twitter feeds, their Facebook, their RSS feeds, their corporate applications, their intranet, um, their enterprise app store, their digital marketplace. Everything comes into one workspace. Their end users all around the world log into it, um, get their applications and content logging in just once. So. That's when we say workspace management, uh, that's what we need, we mean, and that's the end of my presentation. So thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And if you, I think I'm about 30 seconds over, so if you've got any questions, do ask. <laughs> we do have a couple seconds for questions for, the, for Lisa. So any questions on that? None whatsoever? Come on. You sure? Yeah, you don't have to. I'll be around, Artis. Thank you very much. Very good. Everybody. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thanks.